Hello, everyone. I'm Alan Powell from the Essex Grid Center, and here we are for our No Trump Play the Hand, class number three, where we're going to be working on the finesse. Okay. Um, so, uh, just as a reminder, and we talk about this every week, and every week we will. Uh, first thing you always do want to do in a No Trump contract is make your plan, count your winners, right? Build the habit. Before you play to the first trick, I want you to, after the opening lead comes down, dummy comes down, count your winners. You need to know where you are to know where you need to go. Then make a plan to create more winners, whatever techniques you're gonna use to create more winners, be it uh, promotion we talked about, uh, length we talked about. This week we're dealing with the finesse and uh, next week we're gonna start combining them. Um, once you make your plan then and only then call your card from the dummy okay so think first i realize it's difficult and you may not be able to fully formulate a plan to begin with but i want you to make a habit make the attempt you will get better at it you won't get better at it if you don't try okay um so counting your winners uh as we've talked about right a winner is a trick you can take immediately Right, you got ace king of hearts. That's two winners. Um, count in dummy and your hand at the same time. Right, you're in charge of dummy. You know what's there. So in spades here, you would have ace king queen jack. Although you would take them in the order of jack first. Right, high card from the short side. And last week we talked about length, and we decided that when you have extra length in a suit, if you expect that by the time you get down to the long pieces. Uh, nobody will have any more. You can count them as winners. So here you have five diamonds to the ace, king, queen. Now, ace, king, queen, definite winners. You have eight diamonds. You expect they'll break three, two, right? So you could count this suit as five winners, right? And most of the time, it will produce five winners for you. So that was a new wrinkle last week. Um, this week, um, the other new wrinkle I want to add is um, you can count winners that the defense helps you with on the opening lead. So playing last to the first trick gives you a definite advantage, right? Uh, you know which card to play to the trick. And you can sometimes win a trick with a card cheaply uh, because you get to play last to the first trick. Um, this is also why we try very hard in bridge to make the stronger hands declare because then the, the lead comes up to the hand with more strength there's more opportunity for that hand to get extra tricks, okay? Uh, for instance, in example A there, the opening lead is the three of diamonds. Dummy doesn't have anything in diamonds, but Declare has the ace and queen in his hand. Now, if you were just counting winners in this suit, uh, you would count the ace of diamonds as a winner. You're missing the king, you would not count the queen of diamonds as a winner. But because the opening lead is the three of diamonds, the lead is coming into your ace queen. So it goes three. You play the two from dummy. And um, east is in a pickle, right? If east plays the king, you win your ace. Uh, and the queen is good. If east plays low, you win your queen. And your ace is still good later, right? So whatever east chooses here, declare has the first two tricks. And because of that, when you're counting your winners, when the lead comes into your ace queen, you can count that as two winners at the start. Okay, right hand example here, uh, similar. The opening lead is the three of clubs, right? Um, we have the ace and king of clubs and if we were just counting winners in this suit, we would count it as two club winners. However, uh, with the jack in our hand, we can actually get a third winner from this suit because of the opening lead for sure. Uh, opening lead three of clubs, dummy plays the two and east is again in a pickle. If he plays the queen, we win our ace. The jack and the king are now promoted to winners, right? If he plays low, anything lower than the queen, our jack is now a winner and we still have the ace and the king. Because we get to play last of the trick, we can count three club tricks because of the opening lead, right? So we've upgraded the number of winners in that suit after the opening lead is made. Um, here, the left-hand example is not quite so obvious, uh, but it is still the same principle. Uh, opening lead is the three of diamonds. Now, you definitely have the ace of diamonds. You would count one winner in this suit, right? 
But once they lead the suit, you can actually force two winners in the suit. And the way you would do that, they, they lead the three, you play the two from dummy. And East, now East could win this trick with the king, but if he wins this trick with the king, our queen and our ace are winners. We went from one winner to two. Alternatively, if we play the two from dummy and East plays a low card, our queen wins this trick and we still have the ace of diamonds to win the trick. Um, so one of the things you have to work on in bridge is understanding uh, after the opening lead is made, uh, what the best way to play from both of your hand and dummy is in order to maximize the tricks in that suit. Um, so sometimes you can take advantage of the opening lead to create extra tricks for yourself. Um, in the right hand example here, so opening lead queen of spades, we didn't have much in this suit, right? We wouldn't count any winners in this suit, but being that we have the king and being that we get to play last, we now have a winner in this suit, right? So because they lead the queen, dummy will play the three and East will have a choice to make. He can play the ace if he has it. If he plays the ace, our king is now a winner. If he plays low, we can win the king. So whatever he chooses, uh, our king will now be a trick. So if the opening lead was a spade on this hand, queen of spades or another spade for that matter, um, when I looked at this, when I counted my winners, I would count one winner in spades, even though I don't have the ace, right? Because I know from the opening lead, I am going to get that king of spades one way or another, either right now or later. Okay. Um, so let's put that into practice a little bit, the idea, right? Uh, here, the contract is three no trump. So how many winners do we need to make our contract? Nine, right? Um, how many winners do we have off the top? All right, well, let's count our winners. Spades, I have the ace. I'm missing the king, so I have one winner in spades, right? But I have some potential there. That queen jack might be able to uh, provide me with some tricks. I have ace, king, queen of hearts. That is three winners in hearts, right? I have diamonds. Diamonds are interesting. They led the jack of diamonds, right? And I have the ace, queen in my hand. So I get to play last. So that lead is coming into my ace queen. So Jack, if I play low from dummy, they play the king, I win the queen, I win the ace. If they play low, I win the queen. I have two diamond winners, right? So I'll count them right away. Clubs, I have the ace, right? I don't have the king or the queen. Um, I do have eight clubs, right? So conceivably, uh, I could set up some length tricks in club. That's well, I could set up one length trick in club, right? If they broke 3-2, I'd have to lose two of them. I'd get one trick out of it. I have seven winners. I need two winners, right? So um, that might not be the best choice, clubs. I might uh, consider spades. I had the queen jack of spades. Maybe we'll talk about that okay. as a place for tricks. And number two, again, three no trump. I need nine tricks, right? How many winners do I have? Well, the opening lead is the queen of spades. And while I don't have the ace of spades, I can now count one winner in spades. So, uh, because whatever happens on this trick, my king will be a winner, either on this trick or after. It goes queen, I play low, east chooses. If he plays the ace, I get my king later. If he plays low, I win my king now, but I get one spade winner. Best, ace, king, queen. Right, I have three heart winners, diamonds, ace and king, good, clubs, uh, I have the ace, I'm missing the king, so right now I have one club winner, but I certainly have some potential there, right, I have eight clubs together and I have some other honors going on there, so uh, I can definitely do something with clubs later. Um, I have seven tricks, I need to get two more, right, and clubs are probably where I'm going to look for them. Uh, hand number three. So uh, three no trump, nine winners. How many winners do I have off the top? Well, in spades, the opening lead is the three of spades. So look at that. I can actually take three spade tricks on this hand because I have the ace and the king for two. And because they led it, I can make that jack. They led the three. I play the five from dummy. And east is 
uh, has to make a choice. If he plays the queen, I win the ace. If he plays low, I win the jack. Either way, I end up with three spade tricks. So I'm going to count three spade tricks. Hearts, I have the ace, nothing else. Diamonds, I have the ace and the king, that's two. And that jack looks uh, interesting, but right now it's not a winner, is it? Clubs, well, okay, let's count our clubs. That's some good stuff going on. I have ace, king, queen, that's three winners. I have eight clubs, right? So if I get a 3-2 break, I expect I'm going to take five uh, clubs. Um, so what suit can produce more tricks here? Well, the only honor that I have that's not doing anything, I'm already counting three spades, it's maximum. I have the ace of hearts and nothing else, nothing going on there. That jack of diamonds, maybe I could do something with that. So I have 11 tricks. Maybe I can get another one of diamonds, we'll see. All right. So. That's sort of how you take the opening weed into account, right? Um, and these particular situations are going to look similar to what we're going to talk about uh, with the finesse, right? All of these particular situations where we got to play last. The difference is when you're taking a finesse, you don't get to play last, right? You get to play first and third because you're choosing the suit. Um, so there's still someone to play after you. Here, guaranteed victory. Finesse, not so much. All right. So um, a finesse, um, the idea is you're going to have honors in the suit, right? But they're not all going to be in sequence, right? There's going to be a gap in the honor somewhere. Uh, the most common example of finesse is ace-queen. Um, you have the ace-queen together, right? So you have a gap where you're missing the king. Uh, another possibility is ace-king-jack, right? You have the ace, the king, definite winners space, a gap, and then the jack. Uh, there are many other possibilities, uh, but those are the most common types. Um, and there are basically three components to uh, a successful, successful finesse. Okay. First of all, position. Uh, in order for a finesse to work, the lead has to come from the correct hand. The opponent being finessed must play second to the trick. And the reason he must play second to the trick is the second piece of a finesse, and that is commitment. We have to make the opponent commit to a card, either high or low, before declarer chooses, right? So position, we have to lead through. The person being finessed must play second. He must commit to a card. And then once he makes his choice, um, we will put select our card, and we will hope, right? Those are your three components, position, commitment, and hope. The hope is um, there are two opponents, and therefore it's 50-50 who has the card in question. Uh, your finesses will succeed 50% of the time. Half the time um, you'll say nice things about me, and half the time you won't, right? Um, that's just the way it is. The finesses, they are not always successful, but if you do them, if, if you don't take the finesse, you take you have zero chance. So you're going from zero to 50, right? It's certainly better than nothing. Um, so in your finesse, you're leading from a chosen position. So you have to be in the right hand at the right time. You have to think about entries. Uh, you might have to get the, to some, the specific hand more than once. You may have to conserve the entries, right? Uh, you're forcing your opponent to commit to a card, and then you're hoping that the finesse will work. So what does this look like? Uh, so this is your basic example of a finesse here, right? You have the ace, queen, and dummy, you have little cards in your hand, and you have nothing else going for you, right? So your objective here is to try and uh, finesse the queen in the hopes that West um, will have to uh, not be able to take his king, right? That we will make him commit first and then we will uh, work around him. So the way this works, right? Position, I have to lead from my hand. I have to lead toward the gap, right? So I have to make sure that I can get to my hand or that, you know, I'm already in my hand. So I'll lead the two from my hand. And West, um, part two commitment, West plays a card, right? 
let's say West has the king and uh, three other cards. He has to choose between either playing the king or any one of the other cards. If he plays the king, then we plays the ace and the queen is good and we have successfully created an extra trick. If he plays a low card and we play the queen, now West had the king, so if East doesn't have the king, he can't play it, right? And we have successfully created another trick. So if West has the king, he's stuck, right? That's our objective, is to stick West with a hopeless situation where he cannot um, make his king good. Um, but the hope part is that we don't know where the king is, right? The king could be in West's hand. The king could be in East hand. So we play the two from dummy, and West doesn't play the king. He plays a low card. We put in the queen from dummy, and now we have to hope we have to hope that East doesn't have it. If East has it, well, 50-50, right? Win some, lose some. But we are at least giving ourselves a chance because if instead we started with the ace, it would be extraordinarily rare for the king to fall singleton uh, and the queen to be good. So we would be giving ourselves almost zero chance by playing the ace first. By playing low to the queen, we upgrade our odds to 50-50, right? So... It's a good chance, but it doesn't always work. Um, another example. So here, um, same idea. We have ace, queen, jack. So we have a gap for the king. Uh, the difference is that the honors are now in our hand. So we must lead towards the gap, right? So the lead must be in dummy. We need to have an entry to dummy in a different suit to get there. Uh, so we play the two of diamonds from dummy and we force East to commit, right? Uh, he has to play a card before we choose, right? So he plays presumably a lower diamond and we can put in the queen or jack. It doesn't matter. Uh, they're both equivalent, right? Uh, we have forced him to commit, right? Diamond, low diamond, commit. Uh, queen of diamonds, hope, right? And we hope that West doesn't win the king. Right. And 50% of the time, uh, West, uh, the queen will win. And if the queen wins, um, the good news is, is we've gotten a second trick. Even better news is we can do it again for a third trick, right? Assuming we can get back to dummy again, we can play another diamond from dummy. And this time, after East commits, we play the jack. Um, so if it works the first time, you should definitely take it a second time, okay? Um, when we say finesse is only work 50% of the time, yeah, but once it works, it works, right? So uh, your second one uh, is almost guaranteed to work. Now, West obviously doesn't have to play the king if he doesn't want to, but uh, that's not generally what's going to be the case. So um, best case scenario, we'll play a diamond from dummy, uh, East commits, we put in the queen, and we hope. And if it wins, then we go back again in another suit. We play the three of diamonds from dummy. We force a commit. We play the jack. And now the ace becomes our third trick. Perfect. If it loses, some days they lose, right? If we play it to two of diamonds, low, queen, and west wins the king. Well, the good news is our ace is still a winner. And our jack is promoted to a winner because the king and the queen are both gone, right? So... Uh, when the finesse loses in this case, we do promote a second diamond trick. So it's not all loss, right? Um, but uh, if we can get the finesse successful twice, we can make three tricks in this suit. Uh, this one is not quite as obvious as the other two in that the honors are split up between the hands. So in order for this one to work, we need to have uh, some backup for the queen, right? We have the queen, we need the jack underneath it. The 10 is a bonus, it's not necessary, but we need the jack underneath it. Um, this will work in a similar way, except that we'll be leading the honor uh, and we need to lead the queen towards the ace to try and trap the king in west, right? So position, lead in hand, commitment, make west play before we choose whether or not to play the ace. Hope, west has the king. So. I lead the queen from hand, and West chooses. 
If he plays the king, I win the ace, and my jack and 10 are promoted to winners. If he plays low, I play the two from dummy, and I hope that east does not have the king. I mean, so 50-50, um, if it wins, fantastic. I just won the queen, and I'm in the right hand, and I'll do it again. I'll play the jack, and I'll trap it again, right? I'll finesse west twice on this hand. If it loses, well, the ace is still a winner, and my jack will be promoted to a winner. So again, uh, not all loss. Uh, I'll end up with two tricks out of it for sure. Three tricks if the finesse wins, right? So um, I haven't mentioned yet the concept of onsides and offsides. When finesses work, we call them onsides, right? So if the king is in west hand and it gets trapped by the ace and we win extra tricks, we say the finesse was onside. Um, if uh, we lead the queen in low, low, and east wins the king, uh, we say the finesse was offside, right? So that's just bridge terminology in case you run across that, okay? Um, finessing for the queen. Now, the queen is slightly different uh, in that there are two higher rounders out at this point, right? The ace and the king. Um, so just two simple rules that I want to give you. Um, you know, things... The, the more you learn, the more complex things get. But these are two simple rules to help you remember about finessing for the queen. First one is, if you have time and you can and you have the entries, go ahead and cash one of the high honors first, right? The one that you don't need to trap the queen. Um, or, you know, if it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. So take one of the high honors first, just in case the queen is singleton. Uh, it's not a high probability, although the more cards you have in the suit, the more probable it becomes. Um, every little bit helps, right? Uh, the second thing is when you have enough cards in the suit, um, you no longer want to take a finesse. So if you have both uh, it, the ace king, you know, and the jack and the gap and you're finessing for the queen, but you have nine or more cards in the suit, um, you would instead uh, play the ace and the king and hope the queen fell, okay? It's a slightly better probability of taking a finesse. If you only have eight cards in the suit and you have the ace, the king, the jack, uh, finesse, definitely finesse for the queen. It's absolutely the right thing to do. So just two rules to keep in mind. Uh, if you forget the nine card rule, it's not a big difference in probability, so you're not losing a lot from it, but uh, it's something you're running down the road, running to down the road. Um, so uh, let's look at an example here. Uh, we have uh, ace jack of clubs in the dummy, and we have the king of clubs in our hand. So um, the gap is the ace jack. So position wise, I want to be in my hand to lead towards the ace jack, right? I want to lead low. I want to force West to commit and um, finesse West. Um, but keep in mind, uh, the first rule was if you if you can um, take the other high honor first. So in this case, I'm going to cash the king of clubs first, just in case it falls singleton. I'll play the king, low, low, presumably low, right? And then I'll play the three of clubs from my hand um that was position in from hand right towards the gap towards the ace jack commitment i make west play first right and then i when he if he plays the queen i win the ace and i'm good right the jack is now high i take three tricks if he plays low i put in the jack and now i hope i hope west had the queen and east does not right and 50 50 whether it works or not right? so Ace and king, definite tricks. Jack, 50% of the time, right? Um, good. Another example here. Uh, again, I have uh, ace, king, and I have the jack. I'm, so I have a uh, um, an open gap there, right? Um, Position-wise, I need to lead towards the gap. So I need to do this one from dummy, right? Position-wise, I have to get to dummy, so I'm going to need another suit to get to dummy with, right? On the previous hand, uh, just a flashback for a second, I could use that king of clubs as my entry to hand. I could play the four to the king, get to the right place, see if the queen fell, 
and play low to the jack. That is not true on this particular example. I need to start from dummy. Uh, assuming that I have the entries and I can uh, do everything I want to do, I will first, you know, take the ace just to see if I can drop the queen singleton, right? Uh, so first thing I'll do is play the ace. Then I will get to dummy in another suit, and then I will lead from dummy. Um, which card should I lead from dummy? Well, the 10, the 9, and the 8, and the jack are all equivalent, aren't they? So uh, I could actually lead from the 10 from dummy on this hand, and uh, it would be the equivalent of playing the jack, right? So what I would do is take the ace. I would cross the dummy in a different suit. And I would lead the 10 of diamonds. So position, I'm in the right hand. I'm leading from dummy, the 10. East commits, right? He plays a low card. If he plays the queen, I win the ace, and I've got all the tricks, right? 10, if he plays low, I can play the three from my hand because the 10 and the jack are equivalent. I don't have to play the 10 to the jack or the 8 to the jack or the 4 to the jack. Um, I can play the 10, and I can... Uh, play the three from my hand, and that's the same as if I played the jack. Uh, and then I hope, I hope that east has the queen and that west is not able to play it. And if it wins the first time, um, I am still in the dummy, and I could possibly take a finesse a second time if I need, because some days uh, east has the queen four times and I need to finesse it twice and I can get four diamond tricks. Um, so a little bit more complicated here, right? Um, I'm missing the queen. I want to cash one of the high honors, play the ace. I want to get to dummy. Uh, the 10 of diamonds is equivalent to the jack. So I run it and I'm still in dummy in case I need to do it again. In this example, um, well, we have the ace, the king, and the jack, right? But we also have nine cards in the suit. And when you have nine cards in the suit, uh, your best bet is to play the ace and the king and hope the queen falls under it, right? Um, this particular rule uh, has a, a bridge maxim uh, that you can memorize if you want to, to help you remember it. When you're finessing for the queen, uh, the rule is eight ever, nine never. So when you have eight cards in the suit or let fewer in the suit, you always finesse for the queen, ever finesse for the queen. When you have nine cards in the suit and you're missing the queen, you never finesse for the queen. So eight ever, nine ever, you can remember that, uh, or you'll hear it coming down the road. There are bridge maxims that you memorize. Most of them are useful. Some of them are not actually uh, useful. So you don't have to sort out the good from the bad. Just because people say it doesn't mean that is the right thing to do. Um, finessing for the ace. Uh, this may seem weird because there's no card out there higher than an ace. So all the finesses we had had higher cards out there to trap things. So we're not actually trying to trap the ace. Um, we are trying to uh, get the ace. If the ace is played favorable, we're trying to, to sneak our card from behind it sort of, right? So it still has the same principles here. The only difference is that we can't necessarily win this trick, right? The ace will win the trick, just a question of where it is. So position-wise, uh, it's still important. You have to lead it towards the king. So the lead in this case has to be in your hand, right? Tommy has the king. Commitment, you make West play first, uh, and then you hope that West has the ace. So in this circumstance, I would play the two from my hand, I would make West commit to a card. If he plays low, I play the king, and I hope West had the ace, and East is unable to take the trick, and I get a trick out of it, 50-50. Um, if I play low towards the king and East pops up with the ace, well, I'm smart enough not to play the king now. I play the four, and my king is now good for a trick, right? So uh, when West has the ace, if I lead towards the king, I can generate a trick. Uh, if I lead toward, if East has the, uh, the, the ace, I cannot generate a trick. Right. Um, so it's the same principle. Uh, the difference being here, there's nothing higher than the ace out there. You're gonna lose a trick, right? But 
you're trying to uh, finesse that king from behind the ace. You're trying to make a trick with the king, right? All right. So how do we incorporate the finesse into the player's plan? Um, well, you're generally speaking still going to want to work on it because you might lose a trick while taking the finesse. You're going to want to work on those suits early if possible, right? Possible because uh, there are restrictions in the finesse, right? You need to get the entries. Uh, you need to have the entries that you need, right? And it may take you time to get to the correct hand to take the finesse. So you may have to play other suits in order to get to the other side before you can take your finesse. Um, as best you can, preserve your winners in the other suits, right? Um, so that you, you have this... Uh, retain a way to get on lead if the finesse loses, right? As best you can. So when you're dealing with these, play the suits in which you need to finesse early, but plan ahead for the entries, right? You need to be in the correct hand at the right time. Once you uh, take your finesses, if they work, great, right? take all your tricks. If they uh, don't work, try and get back on lead and then take all your tricks, right? Um, so as with all no trump plans, you are going to work on the suits where you might lose tricks as soon as possible, right? Uh, with the finesse, it doesn't have to be the very next trick, uh, but it, uh, it should be in your plan as to how you're going to get that done soon. So what's plan makes plan for some hands. Now we looked at these hands already and we counted our winners, but just to review, we need nine winners, three no trump, right? Opening lead was jack of diamonds. We decided ace of spades was one winner, but queen jack was potential. Ace king queen was three winners of hearts. Um, ace queen of diamonds, because the lead is the jack into the ace queen. Uh, that is two tricks. And now that we've talked about the finesse, you can see what is really happening here with the ace queen in your hand is you're getting what is in fact a free finesse, right? Uh, by being able to play the ace queen on the at the end of the trick, you are guaranteeing uh, two tricks. You're guaranteeing that this finesse will win. Okay, so you have the ace queen. The lead is coming into your gap. You get to play last. Uh, we we frequently call that a free finesse. So two diamond tricks and the ace of clubs. Where can I get more tricks? Well, um, I could possibly generate a couple uh, one club trick with length but I have to lose tr lead twice and uh, I only get one trick and I need two. More attractive to me is the spades, ace, queen, jack. So now that, now that you've talked about the finesse, this should be screaming finesse at you, right? Um, in order for me to finesse against the king, um, I would need to have entries to dummy. I do have entries to dummy. I have the ace and king of hearts, right? So... Uh, my plan here is I'm going to try and finesse east for the king of spades. That's going to be how I'm going to try and make my contract here. All right. So this is the same hand that we were just looking at. The opening lead is the jack of diamonds, right? And our plan is um, to finesse for the king of spades. So to put that into action, I'm going to play low. Let's assume that East plays low as well. I'm going to win the queen. My first diamond trick, that was my free finesse, right? Into the ace queen. Now my plan is to finesse spades. Position-wise, I need to be in dummy and I need to lead towards the ace queen jack. The only way I'm gonna get to dummy is with the heart. Right? I'm going to lead my spade. I force East to commit to a card. Right? Presumably he will play the seven and I will play the queen. I could play the jack, same thing. It does not matter. And West, who does not have the king, cannot win this trick. I think to myself, excellent. I've got an extra spade trick. And because the finesse won, I want to do it again because I think I can get another spade trick. So I play low back to the ace using my second entry. Notice I didn't take all my hearts yet. I'm using my hearts as entries. And I do it again. I play another spade. I force East to commit. Uh, East will presumably play the nine. If he played the king, I'd win the ace. If he plays the nine, I put in the jack. And again, West cannot win the trick. 
And that will allow me to get um, all the tricks that I need, right? I have the spade, I have the queen of hearts, the ace of clubs, and the ace of diamonds will get me my nine tricks. Um, so let me just uh, show the importance of uh, position on here, okay? The reason you have to lead towards it as opposed to some other methods. So Jack to the queen. Um, suppose instead I played spades from this hand and I played the queen of spades from this hand. Um, there's no there's no problem here. He can just win the king, right? It is because I force him to play before me, before I make my choice of ace, queen, and jack, that I am able to uh, get the extra tricks here. If I do it this way, I'll promote the jack of spades, but uh, I lose the opportunity to take uh, the extra spade trick. All right? So that's why position, that's why leading from the correct hand towards the gap is the important piece here. All right? One of the important pieces at all. So let's look at hand number two. Hand number two, three no trump, nine winners needed. We did count our winners, but just to go through it again, the king of spades is a winner because they led the queen of spades. So whether east plays the ace and my, my king is good later, or whether east plays low and my king is good now, I have one spade trick. Hearts, ace, king, queen, three hearts. Diamonds, ace, king, two diamonds, good. Clubs, I only have the ace of clubs. So where can I get more clubs? Well, I have a whole bunch of clubs and a bunch of honors that don't include the king, right? Um, so uh, looking at the clubs, I can see I have the queen, the jack, the 10, the nine, the eight. All I'm missing is the king. So there's a gap here, right? Now the ace and the queen aren't in the same hand, but because I have all the honors in between, the 10 is equivalent, the nine is equivalent, right? There is a gap here where I can finesse west for the king of clubs. So that will be my plan. All right, so this is the same hand. Opening lead is the queen of spades. Now, this hand will presumably win the ace, right? And his partner, Levy, he's going to come back with another spade, and I'll win my king. Okay. Now, my plan on this hand is to finesse west for the king of clubs. So... Uh, being as I have all the clubs, I'm going to start with one for my hand. I have everything to back up the queen. I'll lead the queen of clubs. This is the position. I'm leading towards the gap. I'm trying to trap the king into the ace, right? Queen. Presumably he will play low, and I will play low from the dummy. And this hand, we have to hope he doesn't have the king. He doesn't have the king in this case. So the finesse wins. The king is on sides. Right, the finesse wins. So I've gotten one club trick out of this. Um, and that works so well, I'm going to do it again. The good news is by leading the queen and playing low from dummy, I ended up still in my hand, right? I'm right here to do it again. And I'll start with the jack. Play low. And dummy will play low, right? And um, my right-hand opponent will pick something that he doesn't want. So right away at this point, I know what's going on. I know that um, if my East started with one club, then West must have started with four clubs. I had eight, right? So West still has the king, uh, and he has another little card to go with it. So I'm going to have to do this a third time. I play a club, West plays low, I put in the 10, and I know it will win now because if he didn't have one last time, he can't have one this time, right? And now I have turned uh, my clubs into four club checks, right? I had the ace for one, and then I finessed the king successfully three times in order to make three extra club tricks, right? And so now I can take all my hearts, my ace, king, diamonds, and when I come out of this, I will end up with 10 tricks. So hand number three. Uh, hand number three, we are in three no trump, right? Uh, opening lead was the three of spades, right? And we count our winners, but let's just run through them. So in spades, uh, I'm missing the queen, right? I have the ace and the king. And because the lead 
uh, is a spade and it's going to come into my ace jack, I get a free finesse of the queen and I know I can get three spade tricks, right? I play the five from dummy and whatever East does, if he plays the queen, I win the ace, my jack's good, my king's good, that's three tricks. If he plays lower than the queen, my jack wins, I have the king, I have the ace for three tricks. I've got three spades in the bag on the lead. The ace of hearts, that's one. I have two diamonds, the ace king, right? Uh, and I have three clubs, ace king queen, and because I have eight of them and I expect them to break three two, I think I have five club tricks. So I have 11 tricks, that's great. Um, can I get any more tricks? Well, the only thing that has potential here is the diamonds. So looking at the diamonds, I have the ace, the king, and I have the jack. So there's a gap there, right? The gap is the ace and the jack, and I have the king in the other hand. So I'm missing just the queen. So I could finesse west for the queen of diamonds, right? So um, that's going to be my plan, is I'm going to finesse the west for the queen of diamonds. Winning lead was a spade. I played a five. Right, this man plays the nine, and I win the jack. So right away, I have three spade tricks, right? And my plan was on this hand to take a diamond finesse. So I have the ace in the king of diamonds. The, the gap I need to lead towards is the eight jack. So position-wise, I need to lead from my hand. I'm already in my hand, that's good. The rules to remember about leading, uh, about finessing for the queen is always cash the king just in case there's a singleton queen out there. Uh, always cash the honor that you don't need. I need the ace. The ace and the jack are the gap that I have to lead to. The one that I don't need here is the king of diamonds. So I'll take the king and I'll watch. And uh, there's no join but Bill. Nobody has a singleton queen. It's a long shot but every little bit helps. And then I'll play a second diamond and I will force West to commit, right? If West plays the 10, I play the Jack and East does not have a diamond to win. Cannot beat the Jack of diamonds. And now I have created an extra diamond trick. So then I can cash out all my tricks, right? All my clubs run, et cetera. If instead uh, West had chosen to bit play the queen here. Um, I would play the ace, right? And then my jack is still good. Whatever he chooses, I have him covered. That's why I need the ace and the jack in both in the same hand behind him, right? So whatever he chooses, I've got him under control. Okay. Um, assuming he has the queen. If he doesn't have the queen, well, then when I play the jack, then East is going to win the queen. He's going to play back something else. I'll win it, and I'll be satisfied with my 11 tricks. Still more than enough than I need, more than I need. But, hey, who doesn't like a 12th trick now and then? Um, just to summarize, um, make sure that you're always taking time to think before you call a card from trick one, especially in these circumstances where... On the very last hand, you might have called that king of spades in some other circumstances, but letting it go to the jack got you an extra trick, All right? Think about that on hand number three. Um, or you call a card from dummy, count your winners, you know which suits have possible finesses uh, this week, right? You know, normally, you know, you would look and see which suit can create extra tricks by any method. This week, we're looking at for, for, for finesses. Um, make your plan. Execute your finesses, keeping in mind the three pieces to a finesse, position, commitment, and hope, right? Um, keep your stoppers as best you can in the other suits, right, um, to get back on lead. And once you've established all your tricks, take all your tricks, right? So the same principles we've been working with are, you know, count your winners, make your plan, work on the suits that need to work on them, and leave your other suits in the other stoppers in the other suits until you need them and then just take all your tricks okay